Hello, and welcome to another installment of Practical Farms, where we take a look at different farms and make them more practical depending on where we are in each phase of the game. Today we're in the middle of a deep frozen ocean to work on a creeper farm. Now if you've made it to the end and have acquired an elytra, gunpowder is an essential part of taking your game to the next level. Because with gunpowder and paper you make rockets. And with rockets you can fly anywhere you want, which makes it a lot of fun. And the reason we want to build this in the middle of a deep frozen ocean is because it improves the rates of creeper farms by as much as 20 to 40 percent. Now if you don't want to build yours in a deep frozen ocean because you don't have one conveniently located near your base, you can build it in any biome you want other than a river biome and it will work, you just will have a decreased rate. But with that, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how to build one step by step. Now, one thing you'll notice is I've cleared out all the mounds of ice that were piled up around here, and you don't have to do that. Uh, I just did it so it would make it easier to see what we're doing and building for our creeper farm for this tutorial. Uh, but you will want to make sure that when you build up your pillar to build the farm, that you make sure that the AFK platform is at least 44 blocks from the highest point of the ice that's around you, as otherwise you might potentially have part of that iceberg inside your spawning radius, which could potentially interfere with your rates. So let's go ahead and we're going to go up 44 blocks because we're on simulation distance 4. If you're on simulation distance 6 or higher, you'll want to make sure that you go up 96 blocks. So let's go ahead and I like to pillar up with blocks and then add on ladders so that we can make our way up and down easily. But you can use whatever method you like to reach the height for your AFK spot. So go ahead and do that and if you're building this along with us you can go ahead and pause and we'll come back together when we reach Y level 106. Alright so I've reached level Y 106 and I've gone ahead and built a little 6 by 10 platform to build our farm on, uh, starting with the Trident Killer. Uh, if you don't want to use a Trident Killer, you don't have to, but by using the Trident Killer and having the looting effect on a sword, you can increase your rates significantly, nearly double the rates. So I highly recommend using a Trident Killer for this farm. Now the first thing we need to do in building a Trident Killer is to mark out our footprint for where it's going to go. Uh, I usually like to come in a couple blocks from the back side so that I can have room to go around the back if I need to for maintenance or any of that sort of thing. And then come out with a 4x4 four four square to mark where our drop shoot and Trident Killer are going to be. Now we want to have some chests coming off of this and put a hopper minecart right there to collect all of our drops and put a chest out here in front. Uh, so let's go ahead and clear out this spot here. And I think what we'll do is let's put our chest right here, have a hopper pointing into it, and then fill in the rest of the space with solid blocks and put our rails across it like this. Then we just need to remove these rails here, close it in, and then we'll be ready to put our hopper minecart in place. And just place it right on this rail. I like to break the rail that's underneath it because it spins the hopper minecart that direction and then we just block it in with a couple of upside down placed stairs to keep it in place and go ahead and cover this entire platform with another layer of blocks. Then we need to come in and put in our trident killer. So let's go ahead and get the components we need for that. We'll need a piston, an observer, and a hopper, and an on-off switch with a lever. We'll also need a button to block some water coming off the back because we're going to use an impaling trident. Uh, so let's start with by putting in 
our pistons in a pinwheel pattern like this. Fill in the corner blocks. And then go ahead and finish off this and put a stair here and a slab here. This will allow you to have the XP come through to you as your AFKing just outside of this the wall of the Trident Killer. And then we need to put a button on the back of this piston and this piston so we can waterlog this staircase, this piston, and this piston. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And there we go. Now we need to go ahead and put a dropper in each of the corners here. And then have an observer facing into each one of them. And then follow it up with a solid block on top of each of the pistons. And there's our basic trident killer that we make for just about every one of our mob farms. Uh, all we have to do now is put on an on-off switch onto one of the droppers. And if we turn it off, it goes around once. And then when you turn it on, our trident killer runs. Let me go ahead and turn that off for now. Next thing we need to do is put a floor in next to our little access point there so we have a place to AFK. And I typically like to extend this up the same way with the ladder all the way up to this point. And all you have to do then is just stand next to the access point right here and you can collect all the XP as the drops are collected by the hopper minecart. What we need to do now is go up 17 blocks. And since we already have two in place, we need to go an additional 15. Now the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to have a ladder that is going up the side of our drop chute so that we can make our way back down when we're done. Of course, you'll have to crouch to put one on top of the dropper. And then just come in and put a stack of blocks around the whole way. And I like to do them three at a time. And of course, adding the ladders as we go. That way we can reach the layer down below us as we go up all the way around. All we need to do is go up 15 additional blocks from where we started for a total of 17. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll be back with you as soon as our drop shoot is complete. All right, so we've made it to the top of our drop shoot into the kale chamber. And so the next thing we need to do is place a water trough to funnel all of our creepers into the kill chamber. Now, the way we want to do that is to come off this side in the middle, going out an additional eight blocks. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, and on the eighth block come up one more, and then come back and come out the same distance right here. And come up one. Then go out an additional seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and come up one, two for the wall here. And then, of course, come back and fill in the same distance across this way. Then we need to put in a side wall on both sides. So just crouch and come over and place a block here. And come out and place it all the way across. Filling in the wall of the trough. And we want to go too high. And then come in and put a lower part of the wall in as well, all the way to the edge of the drop chute. And I'm going to go ahead and go right there, 
and then fill in the rest of this as well. And then come over here and do the same thing on the other side. Crouch place your block and then build your wall in. Now when you come and build over to here, make sure you leave the spot open for you to get out where the ladder is so you can exit the farm safely once we're all done. Then do the same thing on this side, following the exact same pattern. Alright, so I have my trough in place on both sides of the farm. And you'll notice I left a hole open there for me to access the ladder to get down. If you don't want to use the ladder to exit your farm and you want to use some other method, whatever method you have available is perfectly fine. Just make sure you don't forget to keep it in mind as you're building this farm, how you plan on exiting when you're done. So now what we need to do is go ahead and put in our water streams for the trough. And the easiest way to do that uh, is to have like an infinite water source that you build up here so you can grab the water as you need it. Um, or alternatively, use blocks of regular ice that you can place and then punch with your bare hand to turn into water. Uh, and since we are in a frozen biome, that is a, an option. Since I'm in creative mode, I'm just am going to go ahead and place two buckets there. And you'll notice that the water doesn't go out our access point here as it's at the end of the water stream. But it does come all the way to the end. So then come over here and do the same thing. Place two buckets of water. And it reaches to the end of our platform and into the kill chamber. Next, what I like to do is put a couple of buttons on either side of our drop chute. As mobs will think that this is a solid block, and the idea here is that as the creepers are being pushed towards the edge, they'll think this is a solid block and they won't fight the current quite so hard. The next thing we need to do is come in and put buttons all the way across the edge of our trough on both sides. Again, the reason we do this is because the creepers will see this as a whole block and just come right off the edge without fighting. So just go ahead and do this all the way across on both sides of the trough and we come back together when we are done. One important thing to notice though is you'll see that because we're in a frozen ocean our water blocks froze up. If we don't want them to freeze up we need to make sure that they're being blocked but if they do you can always just break them and it will turn to water. Uh, if there is a button over it I believe it keeps it from freezing. So once you've got those in place you won't have to worry about it anymore. Now that we have our buttons in place we need to extend the platform out this direction an additional eight blocks on each side so let's go ahead and do that from here come out one two three four five six seven eight and put a block on top of the eighth block there and then go ahead and come around and put in a wall on this side Do the same thing on this side here, coming out an additional eight blocks, and extend the wall back to, to our trough as well. And then we just need to do the same thing and fill in a full platform all the way from this side of the farm to the other side of the farm, and put in a three high wall around it. Let me go ahead and do that. If you're following along, go ahead and pause and we'll get back together once we're done. All right, our catch basin is in, so now we're ready to put in our first spawning floor. In order to do that properly, we need to kind of have an idea of where the northwest corner is. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. You could use the stems off of pumpkins, you could use sunflowers, or you could use an empty locator map. I prefer using this one because it's fairly easy to use, but whichever method you like to have, it's perfectly up to you. So first thing we do is we just take a look at our map and we see that this is our northwest corner. And what we'll want to then do is make sure we have a way down to our 
level below us. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove a few blocks here so I can get back down. And then come across to this corner. And we're going to want to go out one additional block on the north, the west, and then when we come around the farm, also on the south side of the farm. When we get to the east side, we're going to want to just be even with this wall right here. The reason for this is to deal with our spawning locations, and I'll explain more when we get to that point of why we're doing it. But for now, it's sufficient to just go ahead and go out one block on the north, west, and south sides, and keep it even on the east. Now this is true no matter which orientation you have for your farm, whether you're going from the north to south on the long axis, or if you're going from the east to the west on the long axis. Whichever side is on the east is flush with the basin wall. Let's go ahead and put that in, and we'll come back together in just a minute. All right, so we have our one layer of blocks around the outside of the basin. I went ahead and also filled in the extra block to make it flush with the walls of the basin on the northwest and south sides. Uh, so now what we need to do is put in our spawning platform. And the way we're going to do that is with sort of a waffle grid pattern all the way across the farm. Uh, starting here and going straight across and then doing that every other block. So let's do that together first real quick. And I'll come across there and then skip one block and come back and then repeat this pattern all the way across every other block. Let's go ahead and put that in and then we'll come back together once that's in place. All right, we have all of our rows that are going across the farm in place. If you did it right, you should end up where your gap is ending right here, even with the south edge of the wall of the catch basin, and then also sticking out one block on the north side. Then what we need to do is go ahead and come in and fill in every other block going across from here. And so we start here and then come every other block. And then when we get to the end, come back, and we're going to repeat the pattern, but in an alternating pattern coming back across. So wherever there's a, a drop chute, we put a block. And wherever there's a block, we leave a new drop chute. And just come all the way back across here and repeat the pattern for every single row. I'll go ahead and do that, and we'll get back together once that's done. Now that we have our entire grid pattern done, let's come back over to our northwest corner. And what we're going to do is install buttons. Now the reason we're going to put in buttons is because we're going to be limiting the spawning attempts by putting in a shorter ceiling than most mobs can spawn. But the two mobs that will be able to spawn in that height of less than two blocks tall are creepers and spiders. So we're going to use buttons to stop spawn attempts by spiders. Because basically what will happen is the spider, if it tries to spawn in on this block, will see that button and say, nope, can't do it. And we're going to do a pattern that will prevent them from spawning because they need a 2x2 two two square to spawn in. We're also going to go along the north and the west side, a row of fences inside the outer wall. So we can also prevent spawn attempts on those blocks, but still allow them on these here. The mechanics for spawning mobs is whenever they pick a block that they want to spawn in, it will try to spawn at the northwest corner of that block. If this was a solid block, you could see that there's no way for the mob to spawn because that corner is blocked. But because there is a fence, that spot is open. That's why we wanted to make sure we know which side is the north and the west side of our farm. So we'll go ahead and put in walls and fence posts first and then I'll show you how to put in the buttons. Now I'm putting in a button in this corner because we don't want to have the fence posts connect and make a corner because they tend to block mob spawns in the corner like that. So what we need to do is make sure that this fence post and this fence post don't connect. And I usually like to use buttons, but if you don't like that, you could always put in a iron bar in the corner as this will allow the mob to spawn right there as well. But if you don't have access to those, buttons are a lot cheaper, and they can easily do the job for you as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put in a two high wall all the way around and put fence posts on the north and the west side of the farm. Once I have that done, we'll get back together. All right, now that we have all of our walls in place as well as our fences along the west and the north side of the farm, we now need to put in the buttons to block the spawns for spiders and put buttons into the holes so that the creepers will fall through them. When we put in our roof, we're going to be putting in trap doors to limit the height of what mobs can spawn. And because it will be less than two blocks high, the only two mobs that can spawn will be spiders and creepers. And by putting buttons every so often, we'll be blocking those spawns for the spiders as they need to have a full two by two area to spawn. And by placing our buttons strategically, we can prevent any spiders from spawning. So let's go ahead and we'll place one here and then one in the hole and then just alternate back and forth all the way across until we have every one of these holes filled with a button. And then we'll repeat the pattern coming across the next row as well. Uh, but we're going to alternate it to where they kind of are at a zigzag pattern. So we'll go here and then place our button in this hole and then one here and just repeat the pattern going back and forth all the way across. So we'll go ahead and do that all the way from this point all the way to the other side of the farm and just continuing to repeat the alternating pattern back and forth until it's done. We'll get back together once we have all the buttons in place. All right, our last button is in place and now we're gonna be able to go ahead and put in our water down in the catch basin below. Uh, the reason we can do this is that water also sees these buttons as solid blocks and so it doesn't count it as having uh, sky access and so the water won't freeze even though we're over a frozen ocean biome. Now if you want to, since you're in a frozen biome, you could place ice blocks here all the way along the way and then break it with your fist to create the water streams. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and use a water bucket since I'm in creative. Uh, but that might be an easier way to do this. Otherwise, make sure you have Depth Strider on your boots so you don't get pushed around so easily by the water streams. Once that side's done, come over and do the same thing on this side. And once your water streams are all put in place, we can go ahead and fill in this temporary access point as we won't need to go back down that way anymore. And we can finish off our fence posts here and here, making sure we leave a way to get back out through here to get to the next level. And that's what we need to do next, is go ahead and come up and put in the ceiling for this level, which will be the floor of the next level. We want to make sure that all the drop shoots on every single level line up perfectly with one below. So we're going to go ahead and just add blocks all the way around, making sure that we match the pattern for, of the layer below exactly. All right, now it's time for us to go ahead and put in our trap doors to limit the height of what mobs will spawn in our farm. Uh, and this is where normally you'll be told to put a trap door over every single solid block of this ceiling, but that is not necessary. All we need to do is place a trap door above each of the spawning blocks on the rows that do not have the drop shoot. And let me show you why. Let's go ahead and place one here and one here. And then skip back to the here and put one here and here and I can show you exactly why. So the mobs always spawn on the northwest corner of the block that, the, that they choose to spawn on. So if our mob chooses to spawn here, it will come to this corner and spawn right here. And so what we need to do oh, is go ahead and place one there and it will look up and see, oh no, I can't spawn here. 
the ceiling's too low for me and it won't spawn unless it's a creeper in which case it will same thing if we come over to this block if we look up at the northwest corner oh no that corner is being blocked by a trap door I can't spawn here and the same will be true on every single block that you pick even if it's one of these let's stand on this block here look at the northwest corner look up oh no that is blocking this corner as well if we go ahead and place them on only the rows that do not have the drop shoots it will block not only the ones on that row but also the one on the row behind it and by doing it this way we will save a tremendous amount of resources we'll roughly only use a third as many trap doors as you would normally expect to use so let me go ahead and put them all the way across we'll get back together once we have them all in place all right our last trap door is in place and we're now ready to go ahead and move on up to the next level so now we just do the same thing we did on the layer below except that we're going to want to alternate where the buttons are to block the spider spawns and let me explain why whenever minecraft does a check to see if we can spawn a mob in a certain coordinate it always goes from the top down in bedrock edition and when it reaches a point and sees that it can't spawn because there's a button there it will then check down to the layer below the things that can stop a mob from spawning is there not enough space for it to spawn because of the height requirements is there a button or an other non spawnable block in that location or is there already a mob at that coordinate if any of those are true it will not spawn a new mob so what it will do at that point is then go down to a lower coordinate to check to see if it can spawn there so by alternating our buttons back and forth from layer to layer we will increase the likelihood that a creeper will spawn in one of our locations so since there is a button there we won't put one in this location but we will put one here and then just follow that same pattern of alternating every other block and then coming in and doing the same thing on this side as well I'm going to go ahead and do that, putting in walls, fences, and buttons, and I'll get back with you once that's all done. Our last button is in place for this layer, uh, and this time I decided to leave the uh, way out over on this side so I don't have to worry about the fence posts. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put in our ceiling for this layer as well. Now, if you're only planning on putting in a few layers, I recommend putting in at least four if you want to be able to take advantage of both cave and surface spawns for this farm. But if you want to put in enough layers to maximize the full spawning capability in our spawning radius, you need to go ahead and put in a total of six spawning floors the way we've done so far, but then leave the seventh layer to do something special to force surface spawns. So go ahead and do that, and I will as well, and we'll get back together as soon as that's ready. We've completed all our layers to this point, except for our last two. And for these two, we want to try and achieve surface spawns. The reason we want to do this is it will dramatically increase the, the mob cap for how many creepers can spawn in our farm. And the way we're going to achieve this is by using regular ice. What we're going to do is lay these blocks down as the four of the last layer because it has a unique property. Ice is transparent when it comes to checking our roof, but it is a spawnable block when we look at the surface. And by using ice, therefore, we can significantly increase our number of surface spawn attempts. So we're going to go ahead and put in ice the same way we did the solid blocks below, making sure that we line up with our drop shoots as well. Now we don't want to use ice for the edge that goes along the wall, so go ahead and use regular blocks all around there. But then you will use ice, like I said, just like the regular blocks for the floor below. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process for this entire layer, and I'll come back to you once we're all done. Alright, so our final layer of the farm is done with using the ice and as you can see I went ahead and put all the buttons into their appropriate places and the trap doors on the bottom side of it for the layer below so all that's left now is to put in our roof for the farm
Now, if you're just going for cave spawns, you didn't have to use ice for this last layer, and you can just use any solid block for the roof. And there are some situations where you might want to have only cave spawns for our creeper farm. But since we're going to be going for surface spawns, we're going to, we are going to use tinted glass for the roof. Tinted glass acts as a transparent block for surface spawns, but blocks out 100% of the light. You could use leaves, but you would need to make sure that you put them an additional seven blocks above the floor so that it, so that it blocks enough of the sunlight to allow spawns to occur. But I prefer using tinted glass, so that's what we're going to use here. So all you have to do is just come through and fill in the entire area with tinted glass. Uh, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have no spawn attempts on the edge of the wall. And you can achieve this by either using the tinted glass instead, but since they're kind of expensive, I prefer just to go ahead and put in torches. You could also put buttons all the way around if you wanted, or slabs, whichever method you prefer. Just make sure that you space them out if you're using torches far enough to where they block all the surface spawns on the lip of the farm. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the roof with tinted glass and I'll be right back with you. The roof is in and I have gone ahead and put some torches around the sides to help spawn proof the roof. Uh, I also went through and went ahead and put in all the trap doors to limit the height of the spawn attempts. All that's left now is to make our way back down to the bottom of the farm. Now the way in which you do that is up to you. If you have a lighter you can fly down, you can uh, do a water bucket jump if you want off the end, whatever whatever you feel most comfortable with. Um, like I said, I've gone ahead and I have a walkway made all the way down. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But in doing it, you need to be extremely careful. There's a high likelihood of creepers spawning at this point. So you need to make sure that you keep yourself alert uh, and just drop right down to the bottom, go into our trough, and we can go ahead and come out the door here. And as we come down this stair, we can just place our blocks there to close up our farm. And now we're ready to put it to use. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of torches here just to keep us safe in case anything spawns underneath here. Now an important thing to remember when running this farm is that we are used, since we're using a trident killer we want to use a sword with looting, preferably looting three, and we want to use a trident if we can with impaling five. If you don't have those things it's not absolutely necessary but they will improve the efficiency of the farm if you do have them. We're going to go ahead and put in one, a trident into our trident killer. Let me go ahead and break open a spot for us to throw that in. Now you probably can get away with just one, but if you want to you could throw in two tridents. That's up to you. Uh, I've run it with just one plenty of times and it works great. Once that's in place, take your looting sword, turn on the farm, and then just wait for the creepers to spawn and fall into the kill chamber. I'm going to let it run for an hour so we can see what a typical output is from this farm. And I'll be back with you in just a minute. Alright, so the test is done. I let it run for an hour. And the results are in and they look pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. As you can see, we have a total of... 24 and a half, a little over 24 and a half stacks of gunpowder. That is pretty amazing. Um, this is double what you get out of a good general mob farm. So if you really want to focus in on gunpowder, this is the farm to go with. Like I said, I only let it run for an hour. But in my testing that I've done over the last month or two in designing this farm, uh, this version of the farm typically does give you anywhere from... 24 to 35 stacks of gunpowder in an hour, uh, but typically ranges closer to 25 to 27, and occasionally hit the 30 plus stack mark on a consistent basis. Now a couple other quick notes for this farm is that you will on occasion get a drown to spawn in the catch basin, and the reason for this is that the corners of the catch basin are just in the range for mob spawning between the 24 and 44 spawning radius. And so you will occasionally get a drown to spawn in that one high water. doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So 
don't be surprised if you find some rotten flesh or or nautilus shell or some copper ingots or even the occasional trident can show up as from time to time it didn't happen for me on this hour that i was testing this farm uh, but i have had it happen a few times in the past it doesn't really hurt the rates of the farm so it's nothing to really worry about Another thing that to note is that if you decide that you don't want to build it over a deep frozen ocean, that's fine. Uh, but if you build it over another biome, expect the rates to be a little lower. Typically, I have found that it ranges anywhere from 15 to 22 stacks of gunpowder in an hour, usually ending up closer to 18 to 20. So if you don't have a deep frozen ocean conveniently located for you, it's still worth the effort of building one in the other biomes. But I think that's where we're going to call it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it helps you out that you can put it to use somewhere in your world. And if it has, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd leave a comment down below letting us know how you used it and how it turned out for you. But on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye!